Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you for this hour. I thank you for this reality. I thank you for deliverance and that the words I say will reflect change. Amen. Take your seats. <clears throat> All right, the last time we uh, got together, and good morning to anybody who's listening or watching by way of uh, streaming video. Last time we got together, we talked about the gift, and I'd like to continue to talk about the gift, the gift, the giver, and what they give up, and what they gain. We understood that gift, gift meant to continue outside or the original understanding of the word gift was rest at the end of a long journey. And so a gift is what was brought. And so they, got, they had examples of how the shepherds would take their sheep to uh, water and pasture, water and green pastures. And the sheep got an opportunity to also rest. And so that was a gift. A gift is a place of rest. This is why if someone gives you a gift and it's something you needed or something you didn't realize you needed until they gave it to you, it gives your spirit a sense of what? Rest. So a gift is an offering. A gift is an offering. It's an offering to God. And there are several ways, and we'll get through those if that is the way God has us to go. So a gift is that sigh of rest. Whew. You know, I've had people give me gifts, and I'm sure you've had people give you gifts, and that gift just makes you feel good when you see it sometimes. A gift. Gifts we understood were in John, 1 John 3, 1. See how great the love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God. It's a gift to be called a child of God. And God is the ultimate giver. And the gift, when he gave it to us, is peace of mind. So the ultimate gift through his salvation is to also give us peace of mind, no fear of death, no fear of persecution. We matter to God, we belong to God. James 1.17, every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of lights, the father of illumination. And so every gift that God gives is perfect because it comes from him. I am perfect. You are perfect. Wonderfully made. The gift comes from the Hebrew word, Ahav, which first, the, that's the root word, well, ah, Ahav or Hav Hav means gift, but Ahav means love. So the word gift comes from the, the word love. So a gift is a sign of love. Gift is a sign that you love someone or you are loved. 
But when you look at the word give, gift, it means to provide or help supply. And so when you give a gift, you're providing or helping supply something. Remember we said gift is an offering. And so you didn't choose your sisters, you didn't choose your parents, but they are gifts from the Lord. Hopefully so. You are a gift. Tell somebody I am a gift. No, y'all just did it. Just tell them again, I am a gift. In the video booth, everybody, even if you're in a video booth by yourself in Atlanta, point to yourself and say, I am a gift. See, if you never learn that growing up, you never know that when you're grown. You get that? Because I was just going to say one thing, but I had to ask myself, why did it take me so long to realize that I am a gift? I am worthy. <laughs> I am worthy of commitment. I am worthy of love. I am worthy of loyalty. I am worthy of respect. I am worthy of honesty. I am worthy. I'm worthy. I am worthy to be respected. I am worthy to be listened to. Why did it take me so long? Because if you don't know that you're a gift to the earth, you become what everybody else says you are. Or you become what you want to be in opposition of who they say you are. So the gift is a privilege. Gift is our love in action. Gift is favor. It's divine favor. This is why some people, y'all make the same amount of money, got the same type of clothes, driving a very similar car, uh, same issues, same period, same cramps, same everything you want to name, but they hate you. And you try and figure out what's the problem. Well, there's something in the way you're carrying yourself that pisses people off. Why are you so daggone happy? How are you handling this with grace? You just cried on my shoulder six months ago. I don't understand. But there's something within all of us if we carry ourselves according to the gift that we've been given and we value the gift of life, it radiates something to others. This is where the gift can get out of sync. The gift, when you are a gift, you also give. Because for whatever reason, you continue to get certain amounts of strength that acquires that, that if you don't give, you'll hurt yourself. <laughs> if you don't, you'll feel bad within yourself. And so we tackled the last time, and this is just a review in terms of you give of yourself without prayer. So you can, it, until you realize that everything I have been, I have has been given to me by the ultimate giver. So everything that I give, I have to get from someplace. But you can become so accustomed to giving of yourself that you no longer pray when you give. Now, pretty soon you're going to understand I'm talking about conversation. I'm talking about money. 
I'm talking about whatever it is that you don't understand that you are here to give, but in you giving, you give your pearls to pigs. And there's the, the scripture says, do not waste your pearls with those precious things that you earn through wisdom, through grace, through understanding, through trial, through effort, through victory, through failure, through depression, through setbacks. Don't take that and give it to a pig because it costs you something. When the gift loses sight of why they give or is not educated on how to use the gift, at some point, givers get tired. And the giver can become bitter Mean, cantankerous, <laughs> withholding, controlling. Because I remember at some point I stepped outside trying to figure out what's happening with me. I still got the headache as we speak. Doctors can't figure it out, don't know what's going on. But I had to say, I'm going to live through this. <laughs> but I don't know if you've ever had the moment. It's a true moment when I stepped outside and I realized how much I had given. And I wanted to have some regret. Does that make sense to anybody? Where all of a sudden I said, because all of a sudden I realized I'm in need now. <laughs> I'm in need. And all I could think about, and it's just human, all I could think about was everybody that I've given to. And I got angry. But my mind knew, come on, D. And sometimes you just know too much. This ain't the road to be on. But then I had to say, you got to be on this road because this is part of recovery. This is my classroom. Because it's not until you slow down or get slowed down that you realize, I didn't have it to give in the first place. <laughs> not the way I gave. Does that make sense to anybody? So if you're not educated on how to give, you know, if, if you were educated when it comes to offering time, they give your mother give you 50 cent, not five dollars. You're educated, give change. You want to educate your child, give them that twenty dollar bill to put in. Give them whatever it is that they do. Let them write the check for the tithe. Let them see the value you place on what God is doing. If you're not careful, I had to narrow it down and what I narrowed it down because I had to go through, I said, am I in regret? Where am I at? I so said, where, where, where am I at? And what I came to understand was this. You can't deal with a human soul that is sick with any old kind of scripture or any old kind of way. A soul that is sick is a spiritually sick soul. 
such as some of our family members and our friends. <laughs> and if you're not careful, you as a gift will try to sanctify them with your grace and your wisdom. Luke 19 says, the son of man is come to seek and to say that which is lost. You have to be careful to understand that those you give to are often lost. And if you understand how lost you are, sometimes you'll lower your voice and stop trying to help everybody. Sometimes it, feel good, it feels good to give to others because you're trying to make up for what wasn't given to you. But is that spirit led? When you give your child, they want for nothing. What are you giving your child? Lack of responsibility. When, they are, when someone is lost, they are perfectly content with being dishonorable. <laughs> My biggest problem as the gift is the continuing giving to the dishonorable <laughs> who demonstrated their divisiveness, duplicity, uh, lack of godliness, <laughs> lack of conviction. I, I, the way I feel it is when you're with these, that person, you know they're being nice because you're around. Does that make sense? You know that they are really being on best behavior. You're the fool. You're the fool when you entangle yourself with someone who you knew were on their best behavior around you, which meant their highest level of conviction was you. <laughs> so the moment they're through with you, they have no more conviction to even act like or pretend to be in truth. It sure is. <laughs> As you get older, there are moments you look back and you say, and that was the moment I should have walked away. <laughs> have you ever seen, am I ATL, y'all with me? Have you ever... I'm going to see ATL. Have y'all, anybody raise your hand if you have ever gotten, went older, gotten older and gotten away from some foolish energy that at one point you couldn't walk away from. You couldn't live without it. I just love the man. I don't care what they say. Anybody ever been there and then you go through whatever that season of grief and anger, and then all of a sudden it's like, summer, summer time. And you can feel the breeze again. And then you ask yourself, what in the world was I thinking? And then you now see these moments for what they were, and you say, and it's at this point, he should have turned around. <laughs> It is at this point she should have called Uber. <laughs> it was at this point she should have told the bartender, no more drinks. <laughs> Why? Because if you're the gift, if you're not careful, 
you'll put the people's needs before your own needs. You'll put the people's needs before what God is desiring, which interferes with your power with God and your power in God. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. Hey, y'all, this is coming from a brother who had a deep sickness. Deep sickness. And that was, who is my family? But those who do the what? Are y'all following me? I know you got a bond with your brother, Joe. But I know ours runs a very, very close second. Between all of us. Does that make sense? And when you are at your point, (laughs) you know who to call. Anybody got any friends like that? There ain't going to be no judgment. ain't going to be nothing. They're going to stop whatever they got to do. And it's just going to be and it's just going to be a conversation of listening and crying and whatever it is and being there. You know that. It's foolish to put that kind of trust in someone who demonstrates themselves not trustworthy with your confidence. Did that make sense? I'm talking about giving because if you give in these ways, you'll always end up in poverty. It's going to make sense as we keep going. And I'm almost through. The giver must discern when you are dealing with the backslider. God is married to the backslider, not you. Are y'all with me? (laughs) No, 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 no. Let me tell you how serious this is. I don't know who told me this. This is a true story. But they had a friend who was in an abusive relationship with this man. And She could never turn him around, and he was always finding something wrong. And on one weekend, she knew his temper was there, and she made sure everybody was gone. He killed her and himself. And she knew it. See, you can give, you can have not received as a woman the love that you were supposed to receive or a father was supposed to give and your soul can become so sick that you'll die for a sick soul. And if it's not a physical death, you'll die mentally, psychologically because you'll put up with things that the person who understood love would never put up with. But when you don't know how to love yourself, you love hard. You love long. And you love wrong. So the giver must discern. As in 2 Timothy 4.10 said, For Demas forsook me, having loved this present world. He has gone back to where he prefers. Did y'all get that? What is a backslider? Someone who has walked away. It is someone who has gone back to where they what? Prefer. So a backslider is someone who turns their back on God and goes back to where they're comfortable. If you are the giver and the giver of gifts and you are the gift, you have to be careful that that is what has been given to you this Holy Spirit that you went through sanctification for, if you did go through the process of sanctification, whatever it is, once you recognize, you must discern 
that you can't change or give to somebody with expectations that they will return to you in humankind. What was given to them if they've already forsaken God and gone back to where they were comfortable? Why are you hanging with them? They ain't no good for you. Why you keep going over there with them? Why, why every time I try to stop you from hooking up with them, I pick you up, I do this, why can't you see? They are where they prefer to be. Give a gift, wake up. And recognize you're the fool. They're showing you who they are. Now it comes in, now listen, I had this on one of my cards. Coming to the rescue of those who have forsaken God cost you. See, it's one thing for me to come to rescue when you hit a bad spot. Uh, does that make sense? When, you, when you've hit some bumpy road. But when you got to keep rescuing the person who is demonstrating they don't want to be rescued, it's costing you. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. When you got to keep rescuing a relationship and taking the high road, high road, high road to the part you're now getting high, <laughs> now you, 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 you know your problem when you got to take you got to hit happy hour just to go home to be happy happy hour is now a necessity <laughs> you talking some stuff up in here Deron you got to get to a point to understand this is my people have done two things Jeremiah 2 2 13 they have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and hewed out their own cisterns, broken cisterns that can't hold water. He was saying, first they turned their back on me, and then they did their own efforts to make their own level of happiness that we're going to just collect the water, but the water became brackish, the water became bitter, the water became stale, stagnant. And so he was basically saying these people have their own methods of sustaining themselves that will ultimately kill themselves and not sustain them because I am the living water. You can't make somebody drink the living water. I know how women feel, man. Because of the compassion that I have for both men and women or just the compassion for souls. I, I began to talk to some divorced women because that's how I got my healing. I just would ask them some questions. I would say, uh, I would ask, Do you ever, did you ever go through a season after you broke up with somebody or divorced them that all of a sudden you realized I saw this all along. Y'all ain't even, all y'all ain't divorced, but y'all chimed in. I even heard Atlanta say to chimed in as well. <laughs> <laughs> you ever been there where you realize oh no you saw this you saw this you saw this you, you, you tolerated this you, you, you gave in to this you laughed at this you played with this you flipped this around with this you got sexy with this you got approval with this you used this as your crutch. Am I making sense to anybody? And so before you get to, that's when, I, that's when I had to stop and take blame away. God showed you. Unfortunately, some of us have so learned how to love people and not ourselves that we were not equipped to stop it. Because we were equipped to love that which hates. 
to love that which criticized, to love that which abused, to love that which does not speak truth, to love falsehood. Am I making, I know I'm making, so I ain't going to ask you that no more. I ain't going to ask you that no more. So when God says, I refresh those who refresh others, at 4 o'clock in the morning, I got up and wrote this card and said, <laughs> "Hope we, where, where is it at? He says, he refreshes those that refreshes others. But we often only see a cool, tall glass of water in a hot desert. <sighs> Actually told me to do this. That's one kind of refreshing. Sometimes you got to get your apple whooped. You got to get your tail whooped by life. Y'all hear me? That is a refreshing. Think about it. You had lost your way. You didn't realize you had lost your way until this life whooping came. Then you wake up like, oh my goodness, I'm on the wrong street. I'm in the wrong state. The wrong state of mind, wrong state of position, wrong state of understanding. And this tragedy, this illness, this setback, whatever, wakes you the heaven up and says, you know what? I need to handle my business. It's like when you hear they firing people, they laying people off. Hey what, hey, what ain't out there? Let me get some of this back work taken care of. Let me, you know, y'all need me to stay late? Oh, I'm you showing up early, bringing donuts, coffee, and all kinds of stuff? You got a new perspective, a new what? Attitude. Why? Because this tail whooping refreshed you. Sometimes you need to respect that enemy because that enemy will pop you in the mouth so hard. And you look up and you be like, whoa, that's when you realize, oh, I just been flowing. I just been going with the spirit. I mean, going with my spirit or with a trend. I hope I'm making sense. I know I am. Keep going, bro. Give yourself a break. Give yourself a what? Give yourself a break. When you are the gift and you're the giver. See, when you're a giver, you perceive needs that need to be met that nobody else can see. Or people see but won't do it. When you're a giver, you look for ways to help people. When you're a giver, you, you get excited when you see a way that you can bless someone and they have no idea that you're going to bless them. When you're a giver, you look for ways. How do I bless the ministry? How do I bless with this? You, you, oh, oh, they got some bread up here. Let me, they giving away bread. Let me get this bread and bring it back to my church. When you are a giver, you, you don't hear don, ta, don, don when it's offering time. You don't hear that. You don't hear that. You know what I mean? You hear glory. You hear hallelujah. So you hear gratefulness. You don't. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> here they come. They, here they come. Here they come. Trying to get my money. Trying to get my money. Trying to get my money. Just sat here been blessed all this time. Often time come. You know how people, kids try to disappear. They got to bust you in the head with the basket. Oh, oh. Yeah. Give yourself a break, man. <laughs> Give yourself a break. So when you're perceptive, that means you're also introspective with yourself too. So when you are a gift, that means you can also see your own faults more than anybody else. And you got to give yourself a break. <laughs> 
Because if you're not careful, you will now be hard on yourself. And what you end up doing is grieving yourself. Because you haven't attained something yet. You haven't gotten there yet. By now, I would have hoped. Accept the reality. Because it's the only one you got. Take your give, or you give your give away. It's all caused to shut you down. <laughs> it's all caused to do what? Shut down your dreams, shut down your understanding. Now let me give this to you. In time, what happens when you give? you'll get to a point that you're depleted energy-wise. You've gone from one stressful circumstance to the next, to the next. One emergency, one fire to the next. One, put this out, put that out to the next. That your soul becomes taxed and overwhelmed, not just spiritually, but also physically. That's why after some great games or great expenditures of energy, by the way, we have our first Ninja Warrior, Will Washington, who went to Colorado. But I guarantee you after all that work, you got to recuperate. Because what you had to get up was your adrenaline. And you had to keep that. And so when you are going from one, see, I want you to understand, when you always got to help, 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 always got to put out, the, be there, be there, be there, always, and your child got you jumping, everybody got you jumping, all the stuff got you j jumping, and you can't find peace, because remember, the gift from God is peace of mind, and they got you jumping, and you're jumping around, and you're running here, and you're doing that circumstance to circumstance, it's going to come to a point that you can't push no more. Because what is happening is you have depleted your adrenaline glands and you are adrenaline fatigued. It took me years and I still hadn't gotten it. But it took me years to understand my own adrenaline fatigue. And that is once, think of it as a bank account, you got but so much in store of that hormone. And once that hormone is depleted, it now has to pull on something else. And when you and so you have hormones of uh, 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 adrenaline and cortisol, and or court, is it cortisone? Cortisol. And what happens with it? Cortisone is a medication. What happens with it is that it has its it grabs energy. And so it's supposed to grab the energy to give to the adrenaline. But when you deplete the adrenaline level and then your cortisone level begins to deplete, you are now draining your system. I'll remember, I remember the night I understood adrenaline fatigue at its best. I call it the shrimp, uh, macaroni shrimp night. We were in 12 gates and some people started shooting outside of 12 gates years ago, down the street. And I had one of the officers, and he freaked me out, pushed me all in the car, and drove off and fast. And <laughs> I'm going to tell him about that. He freaked me out. I, by the time I got home, I was so daggone wore out, I didn't know what to do. Now, why I call it macaroni salad? Because the whole time I knew my arm was in macaroni salad, that was, I had taken home after the fellowship because I was tired and I was going to stress eat that entire thing myself. And it was tuna fish and everything on my arm. But I never took my hand out the tuna fish <laughs> the entire way home because I was just too daggone tired. <laughs> and so when I finally got home, I didn't even feel like cleaning. I just, I just went all the way home like this. I mean, everything macaroni all down in the car and tuna everywhere I'm just I just actually took a little piece ate it I was done 
I could not care another moment. Are y'all with me? That's when you realize you've given too much because it's to the point that you can't care anymore. And once you're depleted, that now turns into depression. That turns to insomnia. That turns to irritability. That turns to weight gain. Are y'all following me? That turns to isolation. Before long, if you're not careful, you will end up, you can't recover from sickness. Your immune system is low. Decreased sex drive. All these things happen as a direct result of you not understanding that there's a limit to what you can give and what you can do. So, if you're going to give, be a cheerful giver. Find a place that's worthy of the seed and give the seed. Recognize that you have been given a gift. And in you being given a gift, give me one second, please. You being given a gift gives you the ability to give to others. Don't let life stop your gift. The best time to give is not just when you're up, but when you're down. Because you're now showing God, even in this adverse time, or this time of adversity, I show my thanksgiving by giving. Be careful that when you get to the point that you have given so much and given all the time where you get to the point where you can now look at the God that you once honored and say, I can't give no more. <laughs> Is that making sense? Where you say, I, no, you have to go back and say, my giving was out of sync with the spirit. My giving was off. The best thing that can happen is God give you a gift of a trial. Thank God for the trials. Because sometimes he's refreshing you to get you dead center and on course. Amen? Give her, get up. Give her, get up. Get up. What are you doing here? Give her. What are you doing here? Get up. God's got more for you to do. There's still some more love out there. There's still some more souls to be touched. Give her. Don't be slack in your giving. Don't be slack in your giving. And recognize maybe you didn't know how to give. Not maybe, most of us didn't know how to give. Start giving, Sahira. Hilariously, with no strings attached. Give hilariously. Don't count it. He's already, when he gives to the giver, And you're a giver. When you give hilariously, he will refresh you with what you're really asking for. Get out of God's way. For everybody. If you don't give to give into the ministry, but your family suffers, is out of order. Attend to the needs of your family as well. First, but learn how to be a giver. 